Hi, so I'm uh, Michael Hořešek, but call me just Michael because if uh, you are not from Czech Republic and want to pronounce, uh, want to try to pronounce my uh, last name, it will be sounds very really funny, like uh, I am now uh, talking English. Uh, I work for Seznam CZ, uh, which is a company making uh, web apps for local people, like uh, email, search, maps, and uh, we are uh, actually good that we are trying to uh, open uh, our maps to, op uh, to the whole world because uh, when I made uh, a planned trip to Pyrenees, uh, it's actually uh, more detailed than, it, uh, than the Google ones. So uh, we do uh, web apps, so we have to uh, test them somehow. Uh, and we does that, and therefore I'm standing right here to share our knowledge, uh, some best practices, some tips and uh, point out some uh, pitfalls. Uh, so how can we uh, test websites? Uh, the easiest uh, thing is uh, unit test uh, and call some API. This is PyTest. Uh, and uh, you should, uh, re re you really should, uh, does it, uh, uh, does test like this uh, because it's very mandatory but it's uh, not enough for web apps because you have to uh, test uh, some request and response. You can do that as well. Uh, Pyte uh, uh, Flask and Django uh, support it. It's, it can be very simple like uh, this piece of code. Uh, but still, uh, it's not testing of the, uh, of the page because there, uh, nowadays there are a lot of client-side uh, scripts so you have to uh, test also JavaScript. You can do that. Uh, this is, for example, Yasmin, uh, or how is it called? And uh, again, it's a unit test. Uh, and uh, uh, sorry. <coughs> uh, now you, you have uh, you can test uh, client side and uh, backend side, but you have to somehow connect it, uh, make some integration test uh, of, of full web page that it's work uh, uh, as what the user see it. So how can we do that? We can do that with uh, Selenium. Uh, Selenium automates browser, that's it. This is uh, what uh, documentation says. And how does it look like? It, uh, it sounds pretty hard, but actually it isn't. It looks uh, like that. It's very simple code. You firstly import something, then you open a browser. Uh, in this example, it's Chrome. Then you uh, get some page. It's uh, our home page, for example. Then print the uh, title of that page. And uh, after that, just quitting, uh, closing the browser. Uh, I'm sorry for these comments. It's pretty dummy, and I don't like these comments in code, so I will not say it again in this talk. Uh, and what can... Uh, uh, do Selenium more. It can uh, crawl the web, it can, uh, you can uh, check some attributes on elements, you can click on them, uh, you can uh, check some cookies, you can uh, make screenshots, and, uh, but that's it. And uh, I don't, I, I, I will not talk about it because I, you can read it in documentation of uh, Selenium. I want to uh, talk about some pitfalls and uh, uh, some best practices uh, uh, how to test uh, web pages with Selenium. So first pitfall is uh, uh, forms. It's really hard. Uh, this code isn't simple and it just uh, does uh, uh, that type Selenium in search field and submit uh, that form. And that's it, and you can see it's five lines, it's a lot of code, and uh, it's hard to find what actually it does. And you have to think about a lot of things, like uh, when you have on uh, client side some on-change event, it will not be fired when you send keys uh, to that input, uh, because when you send keys, uh, focus is still here, so you have to press stop, uh, like in this example, uh, to lose that focus and fire uh, on change event. Uh, also, you have to think about uh, all inputs, like uh, checkboxes, uh, 
Felix, uh, Textaria, and uh, and more. And every input have to be uh, uh, be written differently. Uh, also, uh, there is uh, Bootstrap, uh, which uh, has uh, shiny checkboxes, which uh, uh, hides actually a real uh, checkbox, and uh, instead shows some another element. And you have to think about it. That's a lot of uh, things you have to do, so I made it uh, simple. Uh, with uh, library WebDriver Wrapper, which is on PyPy, you can use it for Python 2 and Python 3, uh, and it's well documented. And uh, code like this one can be very simple. Just find some form and uh, pass a dictionary uh, with keys uh, that are names of these inputs, and uh, the value are uh, values Pythonic types, like uh, there is some uh, text. Uh, if it's a checkbox, you can just pass through false and doesn't have to think about it, that it's some bootstrap checkbox or uh, that you have to click on it. Uh, that library will uh, do it for you. So very simple. Another pitfall is exceptions. Uh, yeah, I can show you some example. I forgot it, sorry. Mm, I have uh, some code here. You can see that it's uh, uh, what uh, what uh, slide shows. And when I run it, it will open browser, open our homepage, print title, and quit. That's it. So exceptions. Uh, so when you, when, when you can f find some uh, exception, with, uh, some element which is not here on, uh, on that page, it will raise no such element, but it will not say where or which one. So I made it, uh, made it simple uh, because, uh, for example, when you have uh, for example, our search uh, engine or Google ones, so it doesn't matter. When you uh, go to homepage, you see some form, you fill, fill in something, click submit, and then you want to check that some results are on the next page. And Selenium will say it's just no such element. But I want to know that it's uh, on, on which page, because th is there a bug on that uh, page with results, or is there a bug with uh, f uh, page with form, uh, and that page is not fairing the uh, good uh, action. With this exception, you can see that the result count is not uh, on home page, so yeah, it's not right here, because you have to be on a different page, so I know uh, that uh, the bug is not uh, on page with results, but on the home page. Another pitfall is uh, status codes or headers. Uh, there is a big discussion on, on WebDriver uh, uh, tracker, and it's closed. Uh, they want to feature, a lot of people want to feature uh, to check uh, these attributes, but you cannot <coughs> because they say that uh, it shouldn't be there. It's just API for browser and uh, if you want some headers or status codes and, and so uh, just uh, uh, use some uh, library for a request. Uh, that's true, but uh, if you uh, want to make some own uh, request, you have to uh, know that link, you have to know if it's get or post or another, uh, you have to know if uh, in, uh, uh, you have to pass the cookies, and you have to pass if, if it's some kind of form. You, you have to uh, get these attributes, and it's, it's, pre it's pretty hard. It's about 10 lines of codes to make it done, and uh, I, I made it uh, uh, and put it to that library, so you can just uh, get the element uh, so of some link and uh, just download file or, or page, and you can uh, check 
actually, what is there. Uh, another way is uh, my colleague did that, uh, that he ran a proxy and uh, checks uh, uh, status codes and headers and, and more from proxy because you can do that with Selenium. Uh, state element exception. It's if you will start write some uh, Selenium code and or some tests with Selenium, you will find it pretty soon because when you uh, do with some uh, something with DOM on the client side with JavaScript and uh, these elements change or disappear and uh, JavaScript completely changes uh, DOM. Uh, you don't have, uh, in, in, in Python you have just reference to that uh, element in DOM. And if uh, something changes, if JavaScript changes it, or if you uh, go to another page, if there is some redirect or something, you don't have this element uh, anymore and you have just reference to something that doesn't exist. So the, in that exception is uh, just get me some element uh, which has IDQ and send some keys, JavaScript makes some changes, and uh, when you send keys again to that element, oh, state the element exception. It's, uh, it's something, uh, um, how to say, uh, you, you don't want to reuse some elements, uh, and if you uh, do that, you have to be very careful because it happens a lot. And actually it's easy to fix it, just, you know, you see the difference. Uh, in, uh, in that ex uh, example is another very, very bad thing and it's uh, time sleep. You don't want anything like this in your test code because uh, what if it, uh, it will take a longer time, it will fail because it will not be, uh, you, you want to wait for some action, but it will not be there, so it will fail. Uh, for that, uh, there is uh, wait machinery in the Selenium, you can use it like, uh, like this, but you have to wait for elements uh, a lot, because there is a lot of JavaScript and you always want to uh, wait for something, so I made it simple again. Just wait for element and that's it. I have uh, proof too. I have some code here. You can see uh, this uh, code from, uh, from slides, uh, just a little bit uh, longer. And it opens uh, our homepage, uh, pass, pass something, uh, then, then reuse uh, re uh, that, uh, uh, well, fire some autocomplete, uh, then it wants uh, first element in that autocomplete so what was found or autocompleted and uh, then show a text then send another uh, keys and uh, show what's there uh, later. If I will run it, it will fail. And now you can see that it failed. Stale element reference exception. So if you want to fix it, you have to just, for example, you slam down or whatever to reuse uh, that uh, getting of element and always get the fresh one. If I will run this, this one.
it works. But uh, you could see that there is uh, time sleep two, which is which waits for two seconds, and you could see that uh, action was uh, much faster and it doesn't have to wait for two seconds. So you can make it uh, with uh, wait for element, and it's almost same, just a little bit shorter, and it works as expected. You can see the change. And when I run it, it will be much faster, about four seconds. So use that. Another thing is uh, searching elements by text. Uh, Selenium, again, doesn't support it, uh, but it's also a common thing because uh, you want to, uh, you will insert something to database, then you want to show some table or some contact info or something, and you want to check that uh, that information is here, and you doesn't care about in which element or whatever. So you can uh, search by that. Uh, it's implemented by XPath, uh, which are very great. You can make a lot of things, but I, uh, I would not recommend it use it a lot. Uh, uh, the first line is a uh, very simple uh, example how it's done, but it's uh, more complicated uh, than that. And uh, it's very slow. You, you can see that in one run, but uh, if you use it a, a lot of times, it will be really slow. Uh, and uh, it, it's not good for maintaining uh, tests with XPath. It's better with IDs and classes because it's, uh, it's much, much easier. Uh, because if you use uh, classes uh, and uh, someone changes a template or whatever, so move uh, elements around, and uh, still these classes are moving with uh, these elements, uh, you don't have to uh, change a uh, test code, ideally. Uh, okay. Uh, we, we know how to uh, manipulate a browser, but how to write tests. Uh, well, you can use uh, WebDriver test case, uh, which is in that library as well. And uh, why it's there? Because it's, it implements a, a lot of cool things, like uh, uh, it creates driver for you, and uh, you just uh, implement uh, get the driver method, like in this example, uh, default is Firefox. Uh, and you can say with uh, uh, constant, uh, if you want open new browser for every test or test case or all tests. Uh, if you will reuse a browser because it's very slow to open a new browser window, uh, then you have another things uh, to keep in mind. Uh, which are, for example, that in test, you can click and uh, suddenly some alert will show up. And uh, when that happens, it's blocking uh, like for user. When some alerts show up, a uh, user can't uh, make anything, just click on OK, somehow dismiss it. And uh, same thing is with Selenium. So when there is alert, you have to dismiss it, and if you will uh, try to do something else, you will get just exceptions. And when some uh, unexpected test, some failed test, uh, will open some alert, it will stay there for forever, to the, or no, no forever, but to, to the time when you close uh, the browser. So you have to close it, and. Uh, 
that test case uh, does it for you in teardown. And other things are uh, windows because uh, your web page uh, can open a new tab uh, uh, to some other page, some link to different uh, world. Uh, and uh, uh, also you want to go back to your uh, web, uh, web app uh, which you are testing. So again, uh, this test case does it for you. Uh, and it does a more thing, uh, because how, how you, you want to uh, check out if uh, your page works just perfectly. And uh, for example, if there is some uh, 500 error uh, or something else like uh, access denied or whatever, uh, you want to know about it. And uh, uh, this test case, uh, after every test, it checks that uh, if there is something like this. By default, it just uh, looks for uh, classes uh, uh, error, and you can uh, change that, uh, uh, and you can see that in documentation. Also, there are uh, error messages because your app uh, can show some error message to user. For example, if a uh, user wants to insert another user with same username or it's some registration form or whatever, and there is already that username registered, uh, it should show an uh, error message. And you want to uh, check that uh, test failed because you want it to insert it and if it's it's not done, you want to know about it. And you have to write a lot of code in every test uh, uh, to check that everything is all right. So I made some decorators. And uh, <coughs> as, uh, that test case always check uh, if there is some error or error page. And if there is something, it's uh, that test will fail. And if you want uh, that uh, it should be access denied, you just uh, put uh, the creator there, and if you go to admin, it should uh, show uh, access denied page, and uh, that's it, you are done. You don't have to uh, always uh, check everything. Also, uh, if there is some form and you want to uh, register another user with admin and uh, you want to check that it will show error message, again, you will just put the correct expected error message and uh, which one, what should uh, be there. And uh, if there is uh, this exception, it's okay. If there is not, it's not okay. And if there is different except, uh, error, class, uh, error message, uh, it's also a failed test. So it's very easy to test uh, things like this, and there are uh, more decorators like this, uh, also for info messages, if you want to uh, test uh, that uh, after a test, uh, after a, a registration there is some info message that everything uh, was fine and you can log in or whatever, you can test that as well. Another things are uh, errors in uh, JavaScript. Uh, as I was showing earlier, uh, you can test JavaScript, uh, some Yasmin unit test, but uh, when you run uh, JavaScript in browser, in real app, it's, uh, th there always can be some bug which is uh, uh, not covered in unit test. So just put uh, this code to your page and Selenium always checks for these errors, and if there is some unexpected error in JavaScript, again, it will fail. I can, uh, I have example for you. It looks like that. It's really simple. Just go to home page and uh, two tests, one for searching, one for some horoscopes, 
and when I run it, It works. Uh, you could see that uh, I uh, used uh, one instance per test. I can also use one instance for full test case or all tests. And if I run it, it will be much faster because there will be just one browser. Also, I can show you some error. You can see that uh, this element is, is not uh, in that page, and that's correct because it's really not here. Also, uh, I love uh, uh, PyTest, uh, also does web driver, so you can uh, write uh, tests uh, with PyTest with uh, this library. So that's it. Uh, it's very simple uh, to write a test with uh, my WebDriver wrapper, but there is still one more thing, and it's uh, you don't have to run it in your laptop uh, uh, with open browser. You doesn't want to always uh, look at it, and uh, you want to run it on uh, server without X uh, server. It can be done on uh, Debian. Uh, you can install uh, PyVirtual Display. It's a Python client uh, for backends, X server backends. Uh, uh, like one of uh, the, you, you can pick uh, one of uh, them uh, which are shown in slide. And uh, for example, we are using uh, X3FB, and we are happy with that. Uh, uh, for example, XVNC are good that you can connect to, the, to it. So if it's uh, failing, you can connect uh, and see what's happening. So it's nice. And uh, use, usage is very simple. Just start some display and uh, start it and run your test and then stop it. Uh, I can show it to you that it works because I don't have any uh, virtual X server on my machine here uh, on the own server, uh, but it very really works. And uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, I would recommend you to use a very big size of uh, that display because there is one pitfall that if you are using some uh, fixed uh, elements, uh, it will mess up because uh, Selenium will always scroll to that element you want to work with. But if there is some uh, fixed element, uh, it will just uh, scroll to that element and if it's fixed something above, it will fail to because uh, it, that uh, click action or something else would fire, uh, would uh, say another element. Uh, uh, theref uh, therefore, you, uh, if you have some fixed elements, you want uh, the biggest size uh, you can. Another thing uh, are uh, uh, Selenium server. Uh, you don't have anything because, as you could see, I just run browser directly, but uh, 
if uh, you want uh, something more, you should uh, check out Selenium Gate. It's uh, written in Java, so be careful with it. And uh, uh, it uh, allows you to run it uh, in more browsers uh, with more operating systems, also uh, some mobile devices, and uh, it will be faster. Uh, it, it works so uh, that you have some master uh, Selenium server and uh, there are a lot of nodes on different type uh, of machines. You will just uh, run somewhere Windows and Debian and Android and whatever and uh, install Selenium server there, uh, configure it like a node and on some master you will register it and uh, with your code you will just connect it to that master and you will uh, say uh, which uh, browser you want. Uh, there, uh, in this example, for example, uh, is uh, Firefox and when it's, it's the really same like uh, with Chrome, just you put remote there and uh, say you want Firefox, for example, and uh, that master will find node where is Firefox. And you can say also that you want uh, Firefox on Debian or that you want uh, Chrome on Android and uh, that master will find that node and if it's there, it will run it and if it's not, you will uh, see uh, some exception. So that's it. Uh, if you like it, uh, check out the documentation. There are um, a lot more things uh, than I was saying. And thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. Do we have any questions? We do. Hello. Uh, if I use one instance per test case, uh, can I have something like uh, setup and tear down methods for each test? Because sure, sure. Uh, okay. You can. And it doesn't restart the browser, but and it is faster. Uh, you have to think that uh, if some test messing up something, mm -hmm. Uh, you have to fix it uh, in teardown. Like, like in the, some another test, if you will run some unit test and this unit test, well, unit test, and it will uh, write something to database. It's some. It's same here. It's when when you click somewhere and it will do something. It's messed up and you have to fix it in teardown. But you can use it uh, normally as you are used to. Thanks. Me? Go back one slide, please. <laughs> um, thanks for the talk. Um, you said you had to put um, big configuration, uh, big resolutions when you're uh, using the display servers like XVNC and uh -huh. other stuff. Is that really mandatory, or is it usable to test um, responsive design? You can test responsive design. Uh, if you will make it smaller, it, uh, your uh, web page will adapt. Uh, that's all right. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying uh, if you have some fixed uh, elements and you, you, can, uh, okay, you can't uh, redo it. If the page is broken, it won't work. Yeah. OK, yeah. thank you. Exactly. Hi, thanks for the talk. Could you comment on uh, architecture of your test suite? When you have a big application, are there some things that you definitely need to test uh, or some that you shouldn't test? Can you comment on that? Well, it's a question for another 40 minutes, but uh, there is always uh, 80, 20, uh, uh, that 80% uh, uh, of uh, work is in 20% of code. So fo focus on, uh, on what your users do mostly and test that. If, if it's okay, if you, uh, this question is, uh, answer is good for your answer question. 
Excuse me? Should you, for example, test your styles? Uh, size. Styles, CSS. Yeah, CSS. Uh, Is it possible? Like the, how the, whether you get the I, page? I don't think so. Well, you, you, you can check uh, which uh, uh, values of uh, CSS styles are there, but I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. Thanks. I have one more question. Uh, can you make uh, something like automated screenshot comparisons with this? Uh, for example, start the test case, do screenshots at every step, uh, remember it somehow, and then compare it uh, every time you run the test case? Is, is there a tool to automate that? Uh, well, I forgot uh, one thing. Thank you for the question. Uh, that uh, when uh, test fails and you use my uh, test case for unit test or my tools for PyTest, it uh, will automatically make a screenshot. And uh, uh, when you see in Jenkins that it's broken, you can just check out screenshot. It's very really faster than the run it on my computer and check out what's, what's, hap what's happening. Uh, Making screenshot is very simple. You can just uh, drive uh, that uh, make screenshot, I think, and uh, just uh, pass a parameter where you want to store it, and that's it. And uh, uh, then you can uh, write your code, which just compares these images. So you can do that, very simple. But I don't know anything about, uh, about any library which is doing that. Any other questions? Um, perf thanks for the talk. Um, which version of Selenium are you using with your worker? Is it 2.8? Which uh, Selenium? So, yes, the version. Yeah, there are two versions of Selenium, 1 and 2. Uh, you don't want to use uh, Selenium 1 because uh, it's uh, called Selenium, and Selenium 2 is uh, actually called WebDriver. And Selenium <coughs> 1 just uh, uh, Call some JavaScript, so it's not really user actions. With Selenium 2, it's WebDriver, and all browsers implemented it inside the browsers, except Chrome, it, uh, it's uh, binary uh, alongside. And uh, you call real API of uh, uh, browser, and it's, uh, uh, it's faking uh, almost real user actions, so Selenium 2. Okay, thanks very much, Michael.